Well, the truck is already in the shop. And with this one, it tells me I've got a misfire on cylinder number two. Evidently, that's a common problem on these little grocery getters. It's really not too strong of a statement to say that I hate mechanicking. Maybe it's because I'm not naturally inclined toward it, and so I never really buy a vehicle without first buying one of these, a repair manual. I could tie that in about the need for a manual, but we've already talked about the importance of a manual for life. No, the truth is, I thought about getting rid of this thing, maybe upgrading, getting something a little bit newer, a little bit nicer, but then I've had to sit down and count the cost. For instance, the initial purchase cost would be higher than this was. The insurance on something newer would be higher. All the little niceties to make it your own, floor mats, seat covers, whatever, that would be a higher cost. As well, whatever it would be probably wouldn't get the gas mileage this does, so the cost of gas would be higher. It really stinks being practical always calculating the cost. Although it reminds me of the startling statement that Jesus said that I read once again in my devotions this morning. It's in Luke chapter 14, starting in verse 26. Listen for a moment. Jesus said, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you desiring to build a tower does not first sit down and count the cost whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he's laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going out to encounter another king in war, will not sit down and deliberate whether he is able with 10,000 to meet the one who comes against him with 20,000? And if not, while the other is yet a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. Now get this. So therefore, any one of you, Jesus speaking, who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. Wow, pretty challenging, huh? I think Jesus is here part using hyperbole or exaggeration to make a point. He doesn't obviously want us to really hate those around us. And as well, there are very few of us who will ever truly physically die on a cross because of our faith in him. It comes back to priorities. I think he's asking, is there anything that we hold on to that keeps us from or is deemed more important than our relationship with Jesus? If so, holding on to it, whatever it may be, truly makes it so that we have not elevated him to the place of prominence highest importance in our life so that he truly becomes our master as we are his disciples. So what about you? Is there anything you need to shed in life to make sure that he is the most important thing? The truth is, I wouldn't have any problem renouncing cars for Jesus. Until next time.